Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profotech Sessions team. I am Sanjay. From this video session guys, we are going to create a new playlist of MySQL and this is called MySQL Trigger Storial for Beginners. This is our part 1. Inside this video session guys, we are going to discuss about introduction of MySQL triggers where we will see about what are triggers, why we need triggers as well as we will see that what are the limitations of using MySQL triggers. Let's understand about the first thing first that is what are triggers in MySQL. So go to next tab. So what is basically database triggers? Database triggers are the database objects which reside in system catalog. The triggers are special type of processors which can be called implicitly. What basically it means? So it means that database triggers are the database objects. If I back to browser go to phpMyAdmin. Now inside this, if I open any of the database, let's say MySQL I processor. Now inside this, if I go inside this more or uh, let me reconfigure that and inside this more, as we can see that triggers option is available inside this database catalog. Back to slide. Now basically the triggers are special type of processors as we have seen in our previous tutorial or inside our previous playlist about MySQL stored processors as we have seen that while creating stored processors we have to call in our code. So that is called explicit call to our MySQL stored processors. But database triggers are called automatically inside the database system. So it will be called implicitly. We will understand about in deep concept in our upcoming videos where we will create about database, database triggers in our tutorial. Each trigger is associated with a table can be activated on any DML statement. It means data manipulation language. So it means that each trigger is associated with a particular or a specific table. Let's say that inside a table, we want to insert some data, we want to update some row or we want to delete some row. So on a specific table, on a DML operation, triggers are implicitly called. A SQL trigger is a special type of a stored processor. It is a special because it is not called directly like a stored processor. The main difference between a trigger and the stored processor is that a trigger is called automatically when a data modification event is made against a table whereas a stored processor must be called explicitly. So far we had seen about how, a, how can we define about MySQL processor as we as in our previous tutorials we had seen that if we want to make use of our stored processor, then we need to call this explicitly. But database triggers are automatically called when we will do any DML statements to any of the table. Let's summarize once more all the statements what actually we had studied inside these database triggers. If I back to browser, now let's say that in our upcoming videos, we are going to make some triggers inside this area. Right now, this database contains already about three triggers. Now let's say that what actually we want inside this MySQL trigger storial. We want that. Let's say that we have hundred of tables and on th those tables actually we are going to operate with the DML statement. DML basically refers to our select, update, delete as well as read statements. Now while performing any of the operation like insert, update and delete, we want to make logs of them. Let's say that we are going to update a row. Before update, if we want to take the old values to save into a history table so we can do this is automatically by using our triggers. Also with the delete operation let's say that we are going to delete a row from our table but before deletion we want to take log and save into our history table so we can do by using our triggers. So in our next video sessions we will see that how can we make use of our triggers to our activated tables. Back to our slide. Now the next question we have that why we need triggers into our MySQL. So go to the next tab. Now let's say that why triggers we need. 
triggers helps us to enforce the business rules. It means that if we want to perform any business logic to our code, then it makes a hierarchy. Hierarchy is something like that if we want to insert, update and delete data. So before all these operations or after all these operations, we have trigger points. On those points actually, we can make log of them. So this is known as triggers basically helps us to enforce business rules. Now next. Triggers helps us to validate data even before they are inserted or updated. Let's say that we are going to update some data. So before update, we are going to actually implicit call to a trigger. That trigger basically takes or basically checks that our data exists or not. Let's say that we are going to update some data with invalid data. But inside the trigger, we have already defined that it will be updated only if and only if we have a valid checkpoints. So by using triggers, actually we can validate our data before doing any operations like insert, update or delete. Triggers helps us to keep log of records like maintaining or detrolls. It seems to be good or a good point to be discovered by reading triggers. This is because while doing any insert, update or any DML statements, we want to make history or log of any table that we can easily do by using our triggers. SQL triggers provide an alternative way to check the integrity of data. Now let's say that we are going to insert some data to our table and we want to implement that our email address should be unique inside our table. Let's say we have inserted one row calling abc at gmail.com. Now while inserting another row, we are going to implement duplicacy of email to our trigger. We have to code for that. We had done a checkpoint that if a duplicate email exists into our table, then it seems to be an invalid data. So by using our SQL triggers, MySQL triggers, we can provide an alternative way to check the integrity of data. So while using our triggers, we have also some limitations of using this MySQL triggers. Let's understand all these limitations. So here I have written some limitations of using MySQL triggers. MySQL triggers are invoked and executed invisible from the client applications. We understood from this point. Basically, as we know that triggers are implicitly called. So that's why it is invisible from the client applications. So therefore, it is difficult to figure out what happens behind or in the database layer. For example, let's say that inside a database, we have defined several triggers and triggers are invisible. They run implicitly inside the database. So if any triggers fails or any triggers, let's say, gives wrong data, then we can't able to figure out what happens inside the database layer. MySQL triggers may increase the overhead to the database server. Obviously, because we are going to implicit call to our database on any of the DML operation to any of the table. So it increases the overhead to our database server. So basically, it's our first video that is introduction of MySQL triggers. We understood about what are triggers, why we need triggers, as well as we had seen some limitations of using MySQL triggers. Inside our next video, we will make some triggers or we will see that how many types of triggers available to use in our MySQL. We will see or we will create by using our command or by using our phpMyAdmin manual tool. All these things we will see from the next video. So inside this video session guys, if you went out, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.